China strengthens agriculture research collaboration with Africa. After several academic exchange trips to China, Thomas Kpoki, former Deputy Agriculture Minister for Regional Development, Research and Extension at the Liberia Ministry of Agriculture, decided to continue his studies in China in 2018. After completing his master's degree, which was jointly awarded by Nanjing Agricultural University at the Chinese Academy of Tropical Agriculture Sciences, CATAS, in Xia, South China's Hainan province, he jumped at the opportunity to study for a plant pathology PhD specializing in disease control in coffee. At Yaozhou, Bay Science and Technology City in Sanya, Boki walked quickly between test fields and laboratory. The environment and the climatic conditions of Sanya and Liberia are almost the same, so I hope to put what I learned here into practice in my own country, he said. Agriculture cooperative between China and Africa has become increasingly close. The Chinese Academic of Agriculture Sciences, CAAS, has so far trained 276 students from African countries, and Nanjing Agriculture University has trained 345 senior agricultural, technical, and management personnel for African countries since 2003. Capacity building is the key to achieving sustainable agricultural production in Africa, said Felix Dapare Dakora, former president of the African Academy of Sciences, adding that the Chinese government has given a lot of support to African countries in capacity building and more and more Africans are coming to study in China. In response to the urgent need of African countries for good production and agricultural development, China has shared knowledge and technologies. In a field of Sanjiang village of Sanyan's Jiaozhou district, Nigerian student Oluole Gregory Jiji followed his mentor Chen Qing to harvest new varieties of cassava under a scorching sun. This new variety can be eaten both fresh and processed and has the characteristics of high yield, insect resistance and strong adaptability, Chen said. Nigeria is the country with the largest harvest area for cassava, an important staple crop in the country. Chen, a researcher at CATAS, helped Titi find his research direction in consideration of the actual needs in cassava production in Nigeria and Titi's goal of improving capacity for technological innovation. Tanzanian student Mkaba Dietram Samson came to Sanya with a clear goal to learn as much as he could about Sisal. Tanzania is known for sisal production, but lack of advantage technology has seriously restricted the development of the industry in the country. Tanzania is looking to carry out cooperative research with China to improve the production levels of its sisal industry. The mainstream sisal variety grown in China, the H11648, is from Tanzania. But it is amazing to find how fast technology has developed here, Samson said, adding that he hopes to learn and introduce China's sisal breeding technology and seedling tissue culture technology back home. In order to expand the test area and speed up the research process, Samson's mentor Yi Kentian with CATAS planted many sisal plants in the open space around the laboratory. He often takes his African students around on an electric bike to check sisal growth and record data. 
Many Chinese agricultural research institutions have extended invitations to African agricultural researchers to study in China and undertake joint research at the workshop on China-Africa Agricultural Science and Technology Cooperation under FAO South-South Triangular Cooperation Framework held in Sanya this year. Sun Tan, vice president of CAS, said that the academy would build an international education institute in Sanya, focusing on recruiting African students to carry out scientific and technological innovation in the seed industry, and the number of international students there will double within five years. Meanwhile, 30 young African agricultural scientists will be provided with one-year training at the National Nanfan Research Institute in Sanya under the CAAS Sunset. Meanwhile, WHO Chief Mull's Calling Emergency Committee on Box. The World Health Organization's chief said Sunday he was considering convening an expert committee to advise on whether the growing mpox outbreak in Africa should be declared an international emergency. Since the last September, cases have surged in the Democratic Republic of Congo due to a strain on the virus which has recently been detected in nearby African countries. World Health Organization Director General Tendros Adamnom Gebreyesus said the UN Health Agency, the African Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, local governments and partners were increasing their response to the outbreak. But more funding and support for comprehensive response are needed, Tendros said on the social media platform X. I'm considering convening an international health regulations emergency committee to advise me on whether the outbreak of mpox should be declared a public health emergency of international concern. A PHEIC is the highest alarm the WHO can sound. Tedros, as World Health Organization Director General, can declare such an emergency on the advice of a committee of experts in the field. In a statement to the journal Science, Tedros added, This virus can and must be contained with intensified public health measures including surveillance, community engagement, treating and targeted deployment of vaccines for those of higher risk of infection. Different strain Formerly known as monkeypox, mpox is an infectious disease caused by a virus transmitted to humans by infected animals that can also be passed from human to human through close physical contact. It was first discovered in humans in 1970 in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The disease causes fever, muscular aches and large boil-like skin lesions. There are two subtypes of the virus, the more virulent and deadlier clade I, endemic in Congo Basin in Central Africa, and clade II, endemic in West Africa. In many 2022, mpox infections surged worldwide, mostly affecting gay and bisexual men due to the clade to be subclade. The outbreak led the World Health Organization to declare a PHEIC, which lasted from July 2022 to May 2023. That outbreak has now largely subsided. Since September 2023, a different strain of mpox, the cleared one b of cleared, had been surging in the DR Congo. On July 11, Tedros said more than 11,000 cases and 445 deaths have been reported in the DRC this year, with children the most affected. 
the African Union said Friday it had urgently approved $10.4 million, around 193.21 million rand from COVID funds to support Africa CDC's efforts to continue to combat the Mpox outbreak across the continent. It will help increase monitoring, laboratory testing, regional and national data collection, case and infection management, and access to vaccines, the AU added. In late July, Burundi reported three cases and Kenya registered a single case. Then on Saturday, Uganda announced that its first two cases had been detected with indications that the infections took place in the neighboring DRC. The international health regulations are the framework defining countries' rights and obligations in handling public health events that could cross borders. The IHR are legally binding on 196 countries. Under the IHR, the World Health Organization chief can declare a PHEIC triggering emergency responses under the regulations. A PHEIC has only been declared seven times from 2009 onwards over H1N1 swine flu, poliovirus, Ebola, Zika virus, Ebola again, COVID-19, and Mpox. And that's it from Egypt's Africa. Stay tuned to USA news and political updates.